Welcome to part three of this series on developing taxonomy and metadata. The module after this one will be about metadata. Hello again, I'm David Shaw, your instructor for developing taxonomy for content management. For more than 10 years, I've been developing metadata models and designing and developing solutions for component content management and learning content management systems. In part two, we finish with understanding the business needs and making a build or buy decision based on criteria such as, does a standard already exist? Can we use it as is? Can we adapt it? Or should we develop our own? In this part three, we will explore what makes a good taxonomy, considerations in evaluating taxonomies, and the methodologies for developing one. What makes a good taxonomy? Well, a good taxonomy should have these characteristics with respect to the established business goals and purposes. It should have usability, manageability, flexibility, and comprehensiveness. It should be effective and efficient to use. We will discuss these in more detail in the next few screens. Usability is a quality attribute assessing ease of use and learnability. Other key quality components in usability are efficiency, memorability, error propensity, and feelings of satisfaction. Ease of use is the utility of the taxonomy. Does it provide the terms that are needed in a knowledge domain to achieve our business goals? The functionality must be provided in a means that allows users to do what they need to do, and in a method that is convenient for them. Learnability is a measure of how easy a taxonomy is to learn without extensive training. Users should be able to understand the taxonomy easily. Memorability is a measure of how quickly a user can recall the way to navigate and use a taxonomy. It is important that your taxonomy is memorable so that a user who has not used it in months is able to quickly recall how to find a document. A memorable taxonomy will lead to more satisfied users. Memorable terms tend to be distinctive, but also more general in ways that make them easier to apply in new contexts. That is, they are more portable. The Latin fetalis catus, for example, is harder to remember than feline or cat. Error propensity in a taxonomy is a measure of the error rate. For example, are we finding the right set of documents, and what is the size of the set? User satisfaction is a complex factor that is not measured easily. It's not a single construct that we can use to assess the effectiveness of a system. It is influenced by other factors, including the system output, user expectation and attitude, perceived ease of use and usefulness, the system type, and the task that we are trying to execute. Reference to a system here is deliberate. As you will find in a future module on metadata, Implementation factors in a specific system can play a big role in the usability of a taxonomy. The user should feel the system implementation is coherent, compact, sequential, and logical. The effectiveness of a system and the effort a user must expend on using a taxonomy are part of the, the art in designing a taxonomy, and even more so when we discuss metadata models. Manageability refers to objects that can be managed and are governable through a process. They are easily handled, worked and shaped, and can be contrived readily to meet the needs of users. One measure of manageability is whether the taxonomy tree was constructed easily. If it is difficult to construct, then it will be difficult to manage. Flexibility is the capability to meet diverse needs, both now and in the future. An inflexible taxonomy will not be extensible easily and will have frequent change requests. This can have dire consequences. When a taxonomy is implemented in a system and content is stored in a node, it is guaranteed to be incredibly difficult and risky to add or move nodes. Comprehensiveness is the scope of coverage, the degree to which the taxonomy meets the needs. This may include the expansion of terms using a thesaurus or other mechanisms to address differences in the usage of terminology. 
There are several open source thesaurus available, such as WordNet from Princeton University and Mobi from Sheffield University. Effectiveness is the capability of producing a desired result. When something is deemed effective, it means it has an intended or expected outcome. Effectiveness is actively measured by task completion rates and other test metrics. For example, you could measure the time to search and find specific documents before and after your taxonomy project. Efficiency is the extent to which time, effort, or cost is well used for the intended task or purpose. Efficiency is a measure of how well a taxonomy does what it should do. Can we search and find the right information quickly using very simple methods? The web three-click rule is an example of an objective in efficiency. This is the development process from part two, with a bit more detail added. The dotted line at the left signifies that the governance committee should be struck shortly after assembling the project team. And a bit more detail is shown in the test, revise, and implement sequence. Tests and revisions are repeated until the taxonomy is finalized and approved. After an acceptance test, not shown here, it is implemented. As you will see in the next module, this basic process is also used in developing metadata with the addition of another step. The process of developing a taxonomy is identify and involve stakeholders, subject matter experts, and end users or customers. Develop a consensus through iteration and develop an evaluation plan and criteria for acceptance. Develop a governance framework and decide how to manage the life cycle, change requests, and change history. The next step in developing the taxonomy is to conduct an audit to determine which taxonomies, tags, keywords, and controlled vocabularies are already in use internally. During the audit, determine how content is generated and do an inventory of where it is located and used. Find out how the life cycle of the content is managed and what are the business processes and workflow. Don't just ask. Have people walk you through the process. Also include any known functional constraints in any planned application or system for managing content. Draft a high-level architecture using knowledge gleaned in the audit and from research and external resources. Develop a broad, shallow taxonomy with no more than three levels and organized around major domains. Don't develop for low-level parts of the business. Establish whether terms are meaningful and reconcile language issues and terminology. Balance the taxonomy and metadata. This is where art comes into play. In the absence of consensus, create a thesaurus, but note that planned applications might not support a thesaurus. Remember, a broad, shallow taxonomy will be more usable, require an order of magnitude less work to develop and maintain, and to apply. As you continue developing your taxonomy, remember that it has to have a root node and it should have a single domain or namespace. Everyone should agree on the classifications and vocabulary, although we will see later that it is possible to have a fixed term at the data level and apply different labels for users to see in different systems. The process works best with a top-down deconstruction, either a system or a content breakdown. In a system breakdown, usually you will stop at what is called the minimum field replaceable unit. In a content breakdown, usually you will stop at what is called the minimum reusable unit. Based on experience, this is most likely a standalone topic. To do the system or content breakdown, you will develop a hierarchy, normalize it, go through a peer review process, test the hierarchy, and keep doing this until it is right and approved. As mentioned before, to develop the hierarchy, you will need to assemble a team of experts and end users. The first cut might be ugly with warts, but you have to start somewhere. Hopefully, you will be able to achieve a hierarchy that is shallow and wide, but not too wide. It might help to classify terms using the model of domain, division, class, type, and finally the content instance. Normalize the tree in your taxonomy by aggregating like terms. 
remove duplicates and merge terms, standardize terms and flatten the tree. As shown in the previous screen, when you flatten it, it should be no more than 10 to 12 siblings wide and 3 to 4 levels deep, although scientific and engineering taxonomies are likely to be much larger. What they gain in coverage, they sacrifice in effectiveness and efficiency. Large models are less effective for many end users because they must have a deeper knowledge of the terminology in the domain and the taxonomy is harder to learn and remember. Review the resulting model with subject matter experts, peer review, and voice of the customer reviews. Test the taxonomy by prototyping applications and desktop exercises and wash, rinse, and repeat as many times as necessary to get it right. At least four iterations are usually required. Well, this is the end of the three modules on developing a taxonomy. The next module will cover the development of a metadata model with different views. If you have any feedback or questions, please send me an email.